Well, November is Lung Cancer Awareness Month. It's a deadly form of cancer that impacts more than 200,000 people every year. And joining me is Dr. Royce Calhoun, a thoracic surgeon at St. Elizabeth. And thank you so much for coming in. Thank you for having me. And you know, what was interesting during the commercial break, you said that you're from California and you came here because this is a ground zero spot for lung cancer. I mean, that's shocking. Yeah. Um, well, I was working out in California um, and yeah, when I looked around the country to kind of relocate, this is, I was attracted to this spot, to St. Elizabeth in particular, mm -hmm. because this is really ground zero for the lung cancer. Yeah. You know, I would characterize it as epidemic. It is a huge problem in this country. Lung cancer kills more men and women than the next three cancers combined. So if you add breast, colorectal, and prostate, all of them together doesn't equal the magnitude of the death rate of lung cancer. That's just incredible. And so, you know, a lot of times growing up, we've heard like smoking can lead to that, mm -hmm. but that's not necessarily the case. It can be caused by other things as well. Sure. To be clear, about 80% of lung cancer is from tobacco smoke. Mm -hmm. So that is far and away the, the most uh, biggest subset of patients we can go after. But there's about 20% of the patients that have never smoked at all. And some of them have radon exposure, secondhand smoke, mm -hmm. chemical fumes, other things that we know can be correlated with lung cancer, but some of them have none of those. And it's probably genetic and it has a, a female predominance, can even occur in very young women. The youngest person I ever operated on for lung cancer was a 19 year old freshman in really? college. Wow. So this is clearly a genetic disorder mm -hmm. and one that also needs awareness. So what are signs to look out for? And if you notice those signs, what should you do? Well, by the time people have signs or symptoms of lung cancer, it's often progressed. So, um, but cough, an intractable cough that doesn't go away, signs of infection that don't go away, wheeziness, um, hoarseness, shortness of breath, sometimes chest pain, sometimes coughing up blood. But Amber, the main message here is that lung cancer is a very curable disease if you can find it early. Mm -hmm. And that's why November is Lung Cancer Awareness Month. We want to spread the news about lung cancer screening, the fact that you can get a, a CAT scan that happens super fast, no IV, and it can detect lung cancers early. So we're trying to change the paradigm of lung cancer to what mammography was okay. long ago. It, it's, it's an annual screen that you just look under the hood, and if you find something concerning, then people like me can take the reins and sift out, is this really concerning or is this just some benign thing? Okay, that's interesting. So, because that's something that you don't really think of. They my doctor reminds me to get my mammogram. You know, they don't remind you to get a lung cancer screening. So each year, go to your doctor and say, I want to do a screening. Is it a simple process? It's only for people that meet criteria. Mm -hmm. So that means if you're a smoker, if you've ever smoked and you're 50 years old or older, there's a good chance that you meet criteria. The official thing is 20 pack years, meaning a pack a day for 20 years. Anybody that's 50 years old that's currently smoking is pretty much gonna meet that criteria. Right. The big difference is even if you quit 15, within the last 15 years, you meet criteria. And, and if we catch it early, we can cure well over 70% of those patients. But if we catch it late, which is kind of old school news, the way lung cancer has always been, then it's often spread and it's you know very incurable at that stage and so a lot of advancements in treatments and quickly tell us about that and where people can get more information so in terms of treatment you know the big news is the screening and the early detection not this not the treatment but the the finding but then after that we have better technologies of biopsying at smaller and smaller uh, stages because of new technology and robotic bronchoscopy systems that we use at St. Elizabeth and we use robotic uh, resections for, for when we want to take it out, which is minimally invasive and a great way to go and most people do really well. And then of course, they're always evolving the immunotherapies, targeted therapies, other things for more advanced disease. Yeah, very valuable information and people, where can they go to learn more? Well, I would certainly talk to your, your primary care doctor about screening if you meet eligibility. Okay. And otherwise you can go online and whether it's St. Elizabeth or other healthcare systems, we all have you know, our, our programs that we use to tackle this problem. Okay, thank you Doc, so much, Dr. Calhoun. Yeah, thank coming you. Coming in, sharing that important information. And again, we will have it on our website as well. Jessica, we'll turn it back to you.